Hi, welcome along to another video. We'll start with the Ward County weather modification vote. Obviously can't show you any articles because we're banned in the UK from looking at USA articles because we're not in the EU. Ward County voters shoot down continuing in weather modification. So what happens to the money? 85% of voters said they do not want the county to participate in cloud seeding anymore. The $31,000 that was budgeted, if the vote passed, will, etc, etc. $31,000 not spent on weather modification, not spent on the American nightmare. The Ward County residents decided on Tuesday's ballot and the voting numbers, 13,000 people, just under 13,000 people voted, just under 2,000 said yes, just under 11,000 said no. Well done Ward County, all back to the American dream instead of the American nightmare. And if they've saved $31,000 the suggestion is what to do with the money is to have a parade. American dream. Good luck with your parade. World Water News by Uska News. Unconventional water resources from the fringes to the mainstream. On the 5th of June 2020, United Nations Water published an analytical brief that examines in detail several types of unconventional water resources, UWR, some of which have been utilized for years while others await catalyzing circumstances. The only common factor linking the various forms of unconventional water resources is the fact that they all contain fresh water. For unconventional water resources can be found underground, on the surface and in the atmosphere and can be found as liquid, ice and vapour. Unconventional water resources on the surface of the land include recycled municipal wastewater and agricultural drainage water while the atmosphere yields additional UWR, unconventional water resources, such as fog harvesting, microscale rainwater harvesting, and rain enhancement through cloud seeding. Over to Poets and Quants, this elite European bee school has launched a major climate change initiative. Creative Destruction Lab announced the launch of Creative Destruction Lab Climate, an initiative that will coordinate entrepreneurs, scientists, mentors and investors. Creative Destruction Lab Climate will focus on innovation areas such as renewable alternative energy, power storage, infrastructure, transportation, carbon methane sequestration, select water, ocean and food initiatives aligned with climate solutions and geoengineering and of course we all know that if you carry out solar radiation management geoengineering it makes renewables such as solar a bit pointless going to bring you renewables and alternative energy and then bring you the thing that stops that working ah oh, remember the faces fargo jet center this is from ain online Business Aviation News, uh, Fargo Jet Centre earns EASA Part 145 nod. Fargo Jet Centre has received EASA authorization for its Part 145 repair station. Mike Clancy, the company's VP of Technical Services, said the approval is also helpful in supporting our sister company, Weather Modification International and Aircraft Sales Division. Remember the names, remember the faces, they're in every video. When things go wrong, these are the names and the faces to remember in these reports. People like Web Modification Incorporated, etc. Or in this case, Web Modification International. So from 1972, Rapid City Man says 1972 flood was not caused by cloud seeding study. Well, that's good news. So Dr. Arnett Dennis was working on a research study called Project Cloud Catcher. The focus of the study was looking at seeding clouds to hasten the onset of rainfall from a particular cloud. The project drew questions nationwide about the cloud seeding connection to the 1972 flood. So Dr. Dennis sat down a couple of months ago, I can presume maybe sometime in 2020, 2019, and recounted the day of June the 9th, 1972, and say why the two events were not related. Well, this should be clear and straightforward, shouldn't it? 
Dr. Dennis, the person who was involved in the weather modification, is going to explain to us why that wasn't connected to a flood. So Dr. Dennis was working on Project Cloudcatcher. So Project Cloudcatcher was launched in 1969 to examine how effective salt and silver iodide were in seeding clouds. The goal was to nudge clouds into producing rain. We were getting into a position where we could really determine what the effects of cloud seeding were on individual cloud groups, said Dr. Dennis. The cloud groups they were eyeing to fly over and drop the substance into on June 9, 1972 were in the northern hills and off in the plains. The question then was, would there be any showers at all because there was a very dry layer aloft which didn't favour clouds to develop into showers, said Dennis. They decided to take to the skies with sights set to seed near a shower in the northern Black Hills, a test case as we called it on some little showers up in the northwest of us, near Sturgis. But they did their thing and moved on, said Dennis. Nothing remarkable came from that shower. A second flight that same day led a crew just east of Fairburn. Around 5.30pm, the cloud was almost into Fairburn, and then as the cloud group came over, the first of the rising ground in the Black Hills, it just intensified a lot, said Dennis strongest one we had ever seen in Project Cloudcatcher. The National Guard and local law enforcement were called in to assist through the night. The rain kept falling and the water was rising. So Dr. Dennis has gone to bed, woken up in the morning. I, I didn't really realise how big the disaster was until I woke up the following morning and turned on the radio, said Dennis. Overnight, 230 people died in Rapid City, eight people died in Keystone, over 3,000 people were injured and 1,300 homes were destroyed. The town was left picking up the pieces and by Monday, Dennis and the rest of the Project Cloudcatcher team was left answering questions. We didn't argue very long because word came down from headquarters that we should not talk to the press, said Dennis. So confirmation that they was told from above to be silent about it. Soon after the South Dakota governor, which if you think about Weather Modification Inc, etc, all in North Dakota, so here we are in South Dakota, called for a three-person panel to investigate and answer the question, did cloud seeding cause the flood? So, bureaucrats, 1972, investigating whether these people have caused a flood after the word has come down from above to not talk about whether they caused it or not. So the bureaucrats have had a look at it, and they said if there had been no cloud seeding, the flood would have been the same said Dennis. So there you have it. So you basically, um, you've got a man, Dr. Dennis, guilty of murder, definitely guilty of over 200 murders, really. It's not corporate manslaughter, it's not manslaughter, it's definitely murder. In the last paragraph here, Dennis said some people chose to not believe the panel <laughs> and said there was no way to prove that cloud seeding did not cause the flood. In response, Dennis asked those people to provide a hypothesis to show how seeding could have caused the flood. So I'd now like to provide that hypothesis based on Dr. Dennis's words. When speaking about the 9th of June, Dr. Dennis said the question then was, would there be any showers at all because there was a very dry layer aloft which didn't favour clouds to develop into showers. And then when they did the first run, it was because small showers had appeared, so they targeted them. So really, there wasn't really going to be any showers and when there were there were a test case as we called it on some little showers up in the northwest so first round on the little showers as stated didn't do anything and they had a second round they went home to bed they woke up in the morning and over 230 people are dead so dr dennis is guilty of murder end of story and you can't say <laughs> it's not going to rain you modify the weather it rains, kills 230 odd people, and then say, but it wasn't to do with that. And that's because three people from an administration that has already sent the message down to not speak about it and be silent has said, it's not to do with that. Okay, it might be 1972, but murder's murder. Hey, come on. So a lawsuit filed in 1975 claimed the cloud seeding project was dangerous and done recklessly. The attempt to set a legal precedent connecting the flood and project failed on legal grounds. So we'll stop that there. A precedent would really not be allowed to be set because once you start saying that people have died because of cloud seeding, then 
people can be held responsible. And afterwards, when it happens again, because a legal precedent has been set, people will refer to that case and say, in this case, people were guilty, therefore, in this case, people are guilty. We've seen it before and spoken about it before. Mary Alford, Tasmania, Snowy Hydro, in their floods, Kerala, Karnataka, in the southern India, Indian states, carried out weather modification, a few hundred people died. We've seen it from the 50s in Britain, the UK. Lumuth, over 30 people killed by the RAF. And we're going to see it soon in the United Arab Emirates, as they're already at the point of destroying houses. <laughs> so the next level is death of people. Anyway, moving on. In the Hindu, flattening the climate curve. There seems to be wishful thinking that technology can be used to suck out billions of tons of CO2 from the atmosphere and store this safely somewhere. But available ones are extremely slow and expensive. Harebrained schemes to regulate solar radiation by geoengineering are bound to bring nasty surprises. What a brilliant article. Over to the Guardian Business. Oceans support world's industries with three trillion dollars yearly, says in my opinion. So the article goes on about how people who catch fish, etc. It's worth three, three trillion. So there you go, if you want to be a more conscious planet that isn't eating fish swimming around in Fukushima's radioactive wastewater from the ongoing triple nuclear meltdown going on in Fukushima, Japan. It's been ongoing for about eight, nine years now where the water is released into the ocean, where all those lovely, lovely fish are swimming around, which meant the American government had to increase the allowed levels of radiation in fish, just so people could still be given fish. But in my opinion's work, and Amanda, I have no clue what the IMO is, by the way, just in case you haven't covered that. <laughs> in my opinion, which is more accurate, it's someone's opinion. But in my opinion's work, and mandate to protect our oceans is actually much wider than that. We also regulate the prevention of pollution from dumping of waste at sea, which is of course why nuclear dumping goes off, our, uh, off the coast of Somalia, isn't it? Because that sort of stuff's really regulated. The discharge of ship's ballast water that could lead to the spread of invasive species, and we address climate change mitigation options, such as carbon capture and storage, and marine geoengineering also known as iron fertilization where quantities of iron are dumped into the ocean a bit like radioactive water from ongoing nuclear meltdowns just chuck it in the ocean it's an experiment it's an accident it's dumping so as you know we like a lovely science article on the anti-weather modification news channel charged particle and this is from mdpi charged particle negative ion based cloud seeding and rain enhancement trial design and implementation. This is the abstract. China has been suffering from water shortage for a long time. Weather modification and rainfall enhancement via cloud seeding has been proved to be effective to alleviate the problem. Current cloud seeding methods mostly rely on solid carbon dioxide and chemicals such as silver iodide and hygroscopic salts, which may have negative impacts on the environment and are expensive to operate. Lab experiments have proved the efficiency of iron-based cloud seeding compared with traditional methods. Moreover, it is more environmentally friendly and more economical to operate at a large scale. Thus, it is necessary to carry out a field experiment to further investigate the characteristics and feasibility of this method. This paper provides the design and implementation ion-based cloud seeding and rain enhancement trial currently running in northwest China. It introduces the basic principle of the trial and the devices developed for it, as well as the installation of the bases and the evaluation method design for the trial. Parliamentarians from around the world unite to discuss the China challenge. So this is from the Daily Research Plot, based in California. Article speaking about the dangers of China. A few things add to this, the regimen's ostentatious breaches of its own global negotiation responsibilities to Hong Kong, mass wrongs versus the Uyghurs, and also others in Xinjiang, boosting suppression throughout the remainder of China, and also hostility abroad, incorporated along with the incredibly 
actual requirements to in interact with China on weather modification and also to de-escalate strains along with Taiwan. So China, bad. Weather modification, bad. Website based in California, China, weather modification, bad. Website based in California, Californian weather modification, good. Presumably, that's how that works, right? Americans say China, bad. China, weather modification, bad. Americans say California, weather modification, good. Based in California, nice. Up to Canada, if you like your law stuff, you can look at the Weather Modification Information Act on the Justice Laws website, easy enough to find. All links are in the info section, don't forget. This act may be cited as the Weather Modification Information Act. Weather modification activity includes any action designed or intended to produce by physical or chemical means changes in the composition of dynamics of the atmosphere, etc, etc, etc. If you want to look into that act, what's in there is to be expected. Over to the Times Hub. Artificial maintenance of the climate can cause the Earth harm. In the US, scientists at MIT have proven that the artificial maintenance of the global climate can harm the Earth. We are talking about the weakening of storms, the destabilization of ice sheets and the increase of pollution in cities. Which you'll remember we covered this MIT report regarding hurricanes and storms and other stuff in the last issue. But what MIT is saying, people are starting to report on. Artificial maintenance of the global climate can harm the Earth. If we go over to Advanced Science News, reflecting sunlight to cool the planet could cause other unintended global changes. Scientists modelled the effects of spraying aerosols into the stratosphere and discover some unintended consequences. So a few things for you to look at. Things to be happy about. Ward County voting to stop their weather modification activities. Okay, so it's a good day in the anti-weather modification, climate modification world. You've had some good news. And they're going to have a parade as well with the money. You just cannot get better than that. Hey, <laughs> it's like, eh, hey, stop that. Have a party. Come on. But we'll leave that there. Take care. Look after yourselves. Thanks for watching, as always. See you next time.